The Growing Project programme works across the city with people who are experiencing homelessness. We're an arts organisation in Digba and we support artists to make work in lots of different ways. The key thing about the project has been making a way to connect with our neighbours. We're working very directly with St Anne's Hostel crisis and we're also working with developers like Bruntwood and Homes England who are very active in the area. The magic of the Growing Project is the way that it brings these different constituents together, sharing experiences. That then has an impact on the city and the way that development can happen, the agency that people have themselves and the way that artists can make work to support all that to happen. Anything that I can get involved with, I do get involved with. The therapeutic aspects of it, it's something that's intrigued me for a long time. Every Wednesday I look forward to it and more people are getting involved now. It made me a better person. Growing our own vegetables and then watching someone else cook it. It's given me a different perspective. Just because somebody doesn't have a home doesn't mean to say that they have any less investment in a city. We're not like a gardening company that just comes in and redesigns a space. It's a very democratic approach to enable the residents to build the relationships with their space, and with the plants and wildlife that exists. I started last August 2020. We've sat down with the residents and we had to think then about, well, how do we design the gardens? People started to then talk about having an area for seating, growing vegetables and other things to eat. So that's why we decided to do some more traditional vegetable growing. The house has a turnover of residents. It felt to me natural to enhance the woodland nature, the native planting. Really the whole premise of the garden is that it will be an oasis both for wildlife but also for the residents of the house. To start from seed, to grow, to plate, really to give people agency over their own food, their own health and their own well-being. We've got three sites across spring. All have got gardens now, which didn't necessarily have gardens which the tenants could use before. Most of the tenants that we work with, based in like a single bedroom and having that outside space, especially due to COVID, really meant that they could engage in something. It all came about through crisis, who were helping with homelessness. I've always been interested in gardening. It really fits quite well with me. We've got peas, potatoes, all your different herbs, chilies, the lot. We're growing cabbage, beetroots, spring onions, and the colours are, you know, are fantastic. One guy's from Jamaica, I know there's another guy here who's from Turkey, another guy's from Iran. It's that ability to create community and friendships where they wouldn't have existed before. When I first go to the hostel, you clam up, you keep yourself to yourself. But with the growing project, it helps you more. You know, we've made new friends. We recognise the part we need to play in delivering a sustainable, thriving city. And I've always been interested in helping facilitate that conversation between the business community and the arts community. Those two communities in the past have been very separate, and I think it's really important that the third sector organisations have a more in-depth, broader conversation. The Harvest Dinner really projected the growing project into that next level and gave it a confidence in the city and able to then move on and do more. The project culminated in a big harvest dinner where we brought together city officials, landlords to sit side by side with the residents to really think about how we could build more inclusive communities. Everybody's thoughts, opinions, beliefs, experiences is valued and has a place. Everything connected with the meal was done by us. The taste and the colours were so different to a normal meal. It made us proud. The whole project in this site is to really think about how we can use the produce that we're growing as an enterprise so that the growing project could be self-sufficient in what they're growing but also self-sufficient in what you're sort of producing. I sit in the fresh air on days like this when the sun's out, it's amazing. This is a real garden. It's got me out of the house and I've really enjoyed getting myself involved. 
The beauty of getting all these different people together who have different backgrounds and experiences is that when they come together, they create something that couldn't have happened before. The tenants are coming from outside where they live into the gardens and just making it more of a home. The garden offers many different ways for people to tell their story and have their story heard. It's an ever-changing group of people, but I think that's what you need in a way because the garden itself is ever-changing. It offers stability and structure and a sense of place. I think every person sort of feels that. I think there's a real unique opportunity in this post-Covid world to rethink about how we deliver a more sustainable, a fairer society. We've created an amazing model that really values people and place. What needs to happen now is for wider communities to start to connect and help to take care of those projects in the future. You can physically see that your work efforts providing something. The whole shebang's really quite cool. <laughs>